We got a big group. <laughs> well, recording, you're on. Okay, welcome everyone. This is our final week of digging deeper for Disney and looking for my sheet, which I can't see. There it is. It is June the 5th, and our topic tonight is keeping your momentum. So that's what we're going to be talking about because we've just finished our six week section of this part of digging deeper for Disney, and we're going to jump into something else. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And actually, I probably should have put those topics in here, Kara. You know, maybe I'll pull it over from our meeting team meeting last night, and we can look at that too. So we'll have so it recorded. The topics, the, the topics that we're going to start for June the ninth. I can I can read it off when we get to that point. Okay, that'll be great. So anyway, we are going to jump over. I'm going to screen share, and there and we are. To me, if you need me, I'm going to keep it on mute so y'all don't have to listen to me cough. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Slideshow. Come on, slideshow. So I love Tigger, and Tigger is like the epitome of keeping your momentum. <laughs> so that's why I picked for Tigger to be our, our poster child for today. So when we, go, when we go to Disney, I will be hunting down Tigger. Just oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Tigger's my favorite. So, okay. So, um, I, I, this makes me crazy where it like takes a second for it to come in. We have to get a second time. So what things, Pam, since you are our main participant on tonight, who, what have you learned in the past six weeks? Cause I've got our topics listed over here. What are some ahas and things that were good takeaways for you out of this last section that we've done? You're on mute. There you are. Okay. Um, that I, I knew I didn't, but this made me realize that I did not do enough host, coach, host coaching, that I did not talk about recruiting to anybody. And... Um, I don't communicate very well with the people either. Okay. And so what's your strategy for fixing all that? Get in there and do it. That's okay. the only way to fix it is to go do it. Good, 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 good. That's awesome. Well, hopefully you picked up some tips along the way of some things that will help you. For those of you guys that are listening after the fact, put your ears on and think about your Disney ears and think about the things that you've learned that are gonna help you to move your business forward. And so what we wanna talk about next is how's your calendar looking? And so wanna think about, you know, is your calendar more full than it was? And all this, this says a countdown to Disney World. I put the one that said too many to count. That's for how many bookings we want, right? <laughs> too many bookings to count. So we will work toward that. But um, I know personally, I've been working on trying to get my calendar back up because it was kind of down for May and June, uh, you know, working on trying to get it back up there. Pam, are you working on that too? My May calendar was fantastic. I, so far for June, I can't get anybody. I have one going right now, but it's, a, it's all dead. So I don't know. Are you know. talking about double host dollars? No, I do not. That will help you a lot. And you don't have to say double host dollars and you have to be 650, just double host dollars. And then after you get them, then you say, okay, now I'm going to help you have the best party possible to get to that double host dollars. We need to get to 650 and here's how we're going to do that. Okay. Don't even come up for air, just keep on going. But double host dollars, I promise you, if you talk about it, your calendar will be full. Okay. So I want you to do that. Okay. Is just, you know, say, hey, you know, double host dollars really good. Nicole, what words are you using to get shows for June? I don't know. Um, so, I mean, mine, I'm going to go there and say double host dollars. I mean, I, you know, I have my regulars that typically every January or whatever day during the summertime, they um, typically book those for the double free. Um, and I mean, I, me personally, I mean, I'm going over both host specials and y'all know this because I've said this before. I always, when we have double free month, I always offer the first, you know, dates that I have available for the next month, which would be July. And I still give those um, double free month. 
is what I do. So I am booked for June and I'm booked for the whole first half of July for this, you know, obviously for double free. So you've been talking about double free. You got the bookings, right? Oh yeah. 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 Awesome. And, then, sure. and I know that this is too far out, like, because I know you're trying to get shows for, you know, and what I always do is I'm a big person to go over specials and I always take or use whatever the upcoming host special is. Yeah. Ice cream maker is a great thing to use right now. Do you yeah. have it yet, Sam? You got the ice cream maker? No. Okay. Um, I'm actually using that at my show Saturday just because it's down the street. So that's the only reason because it's hard to travel with that. But, you know, the grill pans, all the grilling stuff is coming up um, for July. So, you know, if whether I either talk about it or I'm going to use it, one, you know, one or the other. And then, of course, I know y'all know we got August coming too with 60 or off of anything. So, and I think to get bookings to um, Pam when it comes to this, and I know that we've taught on this too, is you really, really got to sell and talk about those power, their, those power tools. Because on average, your most, you know, most people can't afford a quick cooker, a skillet and all that stuff. Um, and they at least, I think people will host a show um, if they know that they can get that for 60% off for your half price. Yeah. I have started doing that more, um, pointing out the bigger, the whatever word you just said. I'm very careful tonight, y'all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I have started trying to pick those out more and point them out to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're just saying who wants to have a party, it's going to be hard to for summertime because people are not going to want to do it, but you got to have a reason for doing it. And I promise you the, the double free thing will get them every time. So, so just like put it out there and just say who wants double free, you know? And, and what I would say is Pam, when it came to this, I would say who wants $430 in free stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what okay. I would do. Um, because whether you had a thousand dollar show or not, it's not like you can't have a thousand dollar show. So, I mean, you know, it's not like they're going to hold you to it when it comes to time. I mean, obviously you still got host packet to see and this and that, but I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I, I do that all the time. Who doesn't want double for, you know, I, I don't even think I say double. I have a picture. I think that says C and double, but I'm like, who doesn't want $430 in free stuff? Mm -hmm. Hey, grab yeah. your, graphic thing that has C and double on there and it posts that if you don't mind because I saw that oh, on yeah, the pages. Okay. if you'll post that and you got something else that has double on it too that would be, would be really really good okay so I was talking to Natalie yesterday Natalie Lewis she's been kind of missing in action the last this whole last six weeks but she um was talking about how that this you know how we talked about doing four parties every week to do a, like 16 parties for the month she did it in May and I picked up an extra $7,500 in sales from those 16 parties. So we should have done that this month, Pam, right? <laughs> this past month. So we can do it this month because I didn't do it last month either. I was still twerking on my, my um, template and trying to make it look good and all that. But I need to just jump on in there and do it. So I challenge you. Let's get it. Let's go get it. Are you talking about for virtual? Yeah. Um, that was just her virtual. She did. Like, what, I don't know what I'm parties doing. All together. She did 17 live parties and 16 uh, virtual parties. I don't know what I'm doing, but it ain't working. Well, we're going to get her to talk to us when she gets back on here. So hopefully on Sunday. And so how many recruits and recruit leads you got? Pam, you been talking to anybody about it yet? The one I thought I had for the month of May, she went up and joined 31. So okay. I don't know yeah. of anybody now. Well, and one of the things is, you know, you, when people say, Hey, I think I might be interested. Like we've talked about, you got to jump on it real quick because somebody else will talk them into joining their team instead for something else. Yep. And you know, when people start saying, I'm thinking about something else, say, okay, uh, you know, here are some of the things I want you to be sure and think about. And we talked about that, the, you know, it's deciding whether you do pamper chef or you do something else. Do you have to have inventory? Do you have to do deliveries? Do you have to pay for the host items? So those are kinds of things that you'd want to know for that. And our nationwide, our show averages $650. That's pretty awesome. Is it, is it that much for the other company you're looking at? And so, you know, when you're doing that, it's kind of coaching them through, not saying, oh, you don't want to do that. You want to do mine, which is probably what the 31 person did. Probably threw us under the bus, I imagine. But um, yeah. Anyway, but just, you know, keep looking for some more, honey. Keep looking for some more. And I would challenge you to go back and talk to your people that you've had for the last year and just say, hey, you know what? I really have enjoyed doing what I'm doing and I'm really having fun. And, 
and I, you know, I'd, I'd like for you to do it along with me. I think you'd be great. Just ask me. So Michael and I talked yesterday, we did our team time together last night cause I'm, I'm on his team. And um, we talked last night and he was telling how he just got started with all the virtual stuff. And he literally just jumped in in the last two weeks. He's not been doing it at all. And he said he's doing 20 green dots a day, which is not unlike our 25 two way contacts. Mm -hmm. But he said, I have green dotted people who I haven't seen since high school. And they're saying, yes, he's not getting a hundred percent across the board, but he's, and he's pushing to do the four every Friday, four, 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 four a month. And who is this? Michael Yokely. Oh, okay. And I've, I've seen his template. I've seen his, I'm not on one of his parties. Um, I've seen his outline. It's very similar to what I'm using. Um, it, so it, it just works. Just when you get a hold of this template, these outlines that are out there, just do what it says. It's not something we haven't heard before, but the point is you have to do it. Yeah. So you and Pam, to, Pam, you said you didn't like to commit. You didn't communicate very well. And maybe if you don't like to talk to people, green dot them. You know, if it's working for him to do 20 people a day, you can do 20 a day, right? Yeah. Well, I, did, I did 20 the other day and got a fundraiser in one booking. So, I mean, it's, it works. It's just, it's going to take more numbers than it ever has before because people are busy and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And even if you're talking live shows, Nicole, who does mostly live can probably say the same thing. You have to just contact more people. Yeah. Unless you yeah. get the bookings at the show. Much, of course, much, you have to ask much, many more people than we used to have to back when we got started. You say 10 to 1, and I bet it's easy 20 to 25 to 1. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Kara, what do you, um, do you mind sharing your outline? Uh-uh. Okay. No, nope, I don't. It's, uh, the party. yeah, I'll, I'll put it in there, and, and I've got a, and I use Post My Party, so I have a template also that I can use, and it's not mine. I got it from somebody else, so you have to tweak it enough to make it your own and not... Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I don't mind you know, that. Everybody so. knows that because that's just the nature yeah. of sharing. Yeah. Um, but it works. It's And I'll tell you, the outline is long, but you start in the beginning. Like, read through it once, but don't get freaked out. Start back at the beginning and do each step as it tells you. Okay. And go through and do it. And if you do that, it, it works. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of bookings right now, but it's because three of my recent hosts have joined. Oh, Rough, that's rough, tough to recover rough, from rough have, right yeah they took their bookings with them so i had seven bookings they got to work more and two of those recruits that that you know, you know they're gone with them and i'm okay with that so i just have to keep going yeah on my end so and i think i shared that last week but it you know rough problem to have but i'll, I'm, I'll take it so. yeah. yeah well so this picture is how many recruits we want to have right <laughs> right all well, the people in that picture that's my want. team at disney next year <laughs> So, how much money are you making? Are you making all the money you want to make? Are any of y'all making all the money you want to make? Nope. I'd like about double what I'm making. Maybe more. That'd be good, too. I would take it. So, we need to work on the sales and work on the recruiting, and we'll get the money that we want. We'll go right along with it. Okay, are we on track for Disney? Are we where we want to be, any of us? I mean, I'm happy with where I am with level one, but I would rather be already at level two because there are people posting there at level two. How far? Pam, do you know how many points you have? Have you looked? I haven't looked in a, about a week or two, but I don't have that many. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're going to talk about how to get back on track. Okay. So here it is. So if you're not, what are you going to do about it? All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So here is the formula that I came up with for us to get on track for where we want to be for Disney. So here are different, there's form, pictures of formulas around the picture of this. But first of all, got to get that show schedule up. So if we do like Michael Yokely and we do 20 green dots a day till we get four parties a week. So fill up the first week, fill up the second week, keep going, you know, don't spread them out through the month, put pack them all in and find some more and pack those in. And if you do that, and even with only a 250 show average, you're going to have 4,000 more points for the month. That's pretty good, right? So 4,000 points for the month would be good. And that means 4,000 in sales, which means 25% commission or 27 when you hit your 15,000 Pam. So that'd be pretty cool, right? So that'd be over a thousand dollars that you made that month. So that's pretty cool. Then if you sign up two new team members each month of the summer, that's 6,000 points a month because it's 3,000 per person. So see that's $10,000 points per month that you can be able to rack up through that. Then if you say, okay, well, if I'm signing up these people, I'm going to be a director. And so that means your trip point requirement goes down from 56,000 to 52,000, so you save 4,000 points right there. 
then you, know, you get what I did not catch on that also is you've got that quarterly bonus. So if you do that, oh, that's true, that's true because you thousand. get another thousand for that. That's exactly right. And um, new team members, when you get them off to a strong start, then they're going to qualify real quick, help them find their first recruits, help them to fast track. You get 6,000 points for each of those. So that's the way to be able to do it really, really quickly because you could earn it just in the three summer months, really, if you do this. And, you know, you, then you've got all fall just to be able to go to the next level or something like that. But this is going to be our, our thing with that. And if you just do one show a month and don't do any recruiting, you're not going to Disney. You know, you got to gotta work it. So let's get on it and do it. If you need to take a picture of this slide, take one. You ready to take a picture? I did. Okay, good. All right. So let's get our calendars full. Whatever calendar you use, let's fill them up. And so I know I've got like, I think 13 cooking shows for June, but I want to get 12 or 13. April, Catalog. go back to that screen for one second for me, please, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Are you adding in the thing? I was screen printing. Oh, okay. So I could share it. Okay, cool. Well, and I think you could also add in the other thing you talked about. Okay, so this is something that I found on a new training that is, this is on that um, Bountiful Bookings for Nicole and Kara that I put y'all in. So it has something for every single letter of the ABCs for ideas for bookings. So these are some ideas for June. So for A, we've got advertising. So you want to think about advertising to people that use cooking tools. Who are those? So we've got people that are caterers people that run cooking schools, restaurant people, you could, cause I, you know, it's like one time I was driving through this restaurant and I had a pampered chef shirt on and the lady said, you sell pampered chef? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. She said, I need a small micro cooker like immediately. And I'm like, got one at home, be back in a few minutes, you know, but it's like anybody who uses our stuff in their business, they're going to want more of it. And so see if they will do a party, maybe on the day their restaurant's closed. Airplanes, sticking those catalogs in the seat pockets, talking to people you're sitting beside. <laughs> Apartment complexes, of course, you can't go around sticking flyers on doors in most of those, but they usually have some kind of a community room, a bulletin board, something like that. Ask the manager about hosting a party for tenants and putting out flyers for people that way, because she could be able, he or she could be able to do that. Auto repair places, and that includes oil change places as well. Most of the magazines that are in there are, you know, Field and Stream and stuff like that. Sports Illustrated, stick a, a catalog in there because people are going to want that. So under B, you got anytime you got somebody doing a bake sale, don't people hate doing bake sales? I hate doing bake sales. I like to eat the stuff out of a bake sale, but I don't like making it to go to one and I don't like standing there and selling it and nobody does. <laughs> so you can offer and say, hey, I got a great fundraiser for you. If y'all like to bake, let me just help y'all by doing a pamper chef fundraiser. And, um, at the bank. And they, they actually suggest instead of going through, y'all, what's wrong? I heard somebody sure and talk. Somebody say something. Oh. Where's the noise coming from? Somebody else. Sorry, it was me. I forgot to mute myself. Oh, hey, Molly, that you? Sorry. I had to. Yeah, I'm at the park and I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. They're horrible. Oh, oh it's all but good. I'll, I'll mute myself. Sorry. It's all good. So we're on the on, We did the A's. We're on the B's. So go in the bank instead of going through the drive throughs You can talk to the teller. And then you can also, uh, when you get checks from other banks, instead of putting them all in your bank, you can go there and cash them at the other customers' banks and meet more tellers. So it's all about getting out there. Bartering, you can trade business with other people in direct sales and get them to be customers of yours. Bathroom stalls, what if you go in and you put up Pamper Chef flyers in the bathroom? I saw one time at a, a bathroom, it had a flyer that said potty times like a newspaper taped on the door on the inside and had information about direct sales. I'm like, that's a great marketing idea. People got to have something to read in there. And then um, beauty salons and barbershops, you know, those places they can have a thousand dollar catalog show in one day. Easy. Um, and I have a friend that actually used to go to a different beauty shop every month to get her hair cut. So she would meet new, bar new beauty, stop beauty shop people. So I thought that's pretty smart too. If you don't care what your hair looks like. <laughs> So most of us have our main person we go to uh, business associates, people that you, you know, maybe do business with or that kind of thing. Take in so many catalogs, take food in there, the pamper a business um, bulletin boards. And that can be like in the grocery store or, you know, in community centers, lots of different places. Restaurants sometimes have them where you can stick your business card up there. Anytime you mail an envelope, I should have put that under the ease, but anytime you mail an envelope, 
put a business card in there and somebody may pick it up and say, Oh, pepper chef, I need that. And they may call or order something from you. You never know what you're going to get and you can write off your stamps. So really cool for that. Bingo. You can have a bingo game and there are a lot of consultants that do that. Just be careful if you're charging anything for people to come and play bingo, that's illegal in a lot of states. So you usually have to let people do it for free but have people ordering and that kind of thing besides the bingo game. So it's not just all about giving away stuff. Um, if you want to do that, you can have the fee be for a charity and then you can still have your bingo. Oh, there you go. See, we got campgrounds, offer to do a show for entertainment and you can focus on rock crocs and things that you can use at campgrounds. There are lots of our tools that you can uh, put a sign on your car, car wash again, meet the chairperson. And I heard a thing today where they talked about, having your own car wash with you and your kids doing a car wash and then have a pampered chef, a zipper bag with a mini catalog and a piece of candy in it to give everybody as they went left the car wash. So that's a way to advertise and get your, your name out. Pull out that old Christmas card list and make sure everybody on it knows that you sell. Um, people who do cleaning, man, those are good recruit leads because they work odd hours and probably don't make a whole lot of money. So, uh, you know, I'd a lot rather be selling pampered chef than cleaning a toilet if it were me. Um, clubs, volunteer to be a speaker for the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, things like that. You can go in and do a healthy cooking demo. Copy shops, you know, and, and one of the other things besides hanging up a flower, flyer in, you know, Kinko's or somewhere like that, I have um, seen a thing where they said when you are making copies of a flyer, leave your original on there on purpose, and that way somebody will see it, whoever's coming along next will see it, and you may get a customer out of that. Um, corporate gift giving. You can start talking about that now because if you go in in December trying to pick up some extra sales to get to your Disney trip, you're going to do a lot better if you start talking about it right now and say, you know, we can do a really great job for you on gift giving. And Carrie, you developed a cool flyer about that a couple of years ago, right? I don't think it was this last year. Maybe it was the year before. Uh, I believe it was the year before. Yeah, I think so too. For D, we got daycares. So you can do a mommy and me demo. We got, can do that with actually our Toy Story 4 items that just came out. Lots of good recruit leads out of that. Daycare centers, you can do a demo or a, a table there at during pickup time and then offer to have, uh, you know, use the, the daycare gets the tools for their daycare kitchen, um, which would be a neat thing to do. Does your FedEx person know that you sell Pampered Chef? Probably because they deliver to your house all the time, Pamper Chef boxes, but make sure you give them a catalog because you might get a new customer there. Dentist and doctor offices, leave some catalogs. Receptionists are always really good. Um, healthcare people love our stuff. Um, donations, you can, uh, if somebody's asking you for a donation, then you can say, hey, I'd love to come in and display at your fundraiser and any orders that we do, we'll turn it into a fundraiser to be able to do that. Um, go door to door. Be careful with laws about that because I know most a lot of areas you can't do that. But if you can, you know, if there's an area where you want to do a show, that's where you go find somebody. Maybe just go walk in that neighborhood and you'll run into somebody that you can talk to instead of, you know, going up and leaving flyers and stuff on people's store steps. E for Easter. Of course, it's, we're past Easter, but there are other holidays that you can do the same thing and have something that you can put like little uh, a piece of candy and a coupon for free shipping, $5 off a $25 order, some kind of a free thing with their first order, free mini serving spatula, something like that, and put them in a basket or something and carry it around with you. And even if you don't get bookings out of people say, well, she's really fun. So you'll at least have people think you're really cool. Um, for Facebook, your VIP group, make sure you're running that, keeping it service oriented where you're giving people ideas instead of constantly sell, 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 so that you'll try to um, be out there and just keep your name in front of people. Fast food places, cool places to talk to moms over there because they're going to be there with their kids at McDonald's and places like that. Um, fundraisers, you can offer those all over the place. And this time of year is a great time to do that. Sports teams are working on, you know, trying to make money for uniforms and for competitions and uh, championships and stuff like that. So always a good thing to do. And then your former business association uh, associates, besides the people you work with now, think about the people you used to work with and stay in touch with them. Do y'all ever go to garage sales? Anybody? Yes. Can't see. So maybe you might be getting going to garage sales and you know, if you're doing a garage sale, I found that people really want to try to get things for nothing. So I don't usually sell my things in a garage sale, but I might put out some mini catalogs and have those out and be able to share with people. Or if you're going and see people have pampered chef things that they're selling, then you can maybe say, Hey, you know, gosh, I, you, you're getting rid of this and 
do you know how to use it? And you might even be able to talk them into keeping it instead of selling it. But you can say, hey, I'd help you get some more things. If you've got a lot of old kitchen tools you're getting rid of, let's do a show so you can get some new stuff to put in the space of the stuff that you just sold. So you go to grocery stores, and I've seen people do this, leave recipe cards and business cards around the store. Just stick them in different areas where people might be needing a Pampered Chef tool to be able to make something. And that way they're going to say, oh, I need a Pampered Chef person. And yes, whoever's restocking is probably going to throw it away, but maybe somebody will get it before you do. Uh, carry around a season's best in your cart. And that way you can strike up conversations with that. And always talk to your cashier. Yeah, I'm going home to try out some new recipes with my job. I sell Pampered Chef. Um, gifts. If you're giving somebody a gift, might as well be a Pampered Chef gift. You'll get a discount on it that way. And you can make up your own gift certificates to be able to give for gifts to people that you give gifts to as well as um, your customers. So I offer those and have some templates in my computer at home. For H, when you're in the hospital, you can leave a handwritten note and uh, our hotel, leave a handwritten note, a catalog and a tip for the maid. Just say, you know, thanks so much for keeping my room clean or whatever and give her a citrus filler. Um, hospital wards, the waiting rooms are a good place and nurses stations. If you're going to visit somebody, you know, I have actually sold things to people and done, uh, gotten recruit leads while I've been going in for colonoscopy. So there you go. <laughs> so, you know, it can happen anywhere. Health clubs, you can offer to do a fresh and healthy demo. Um, and that's a good place to get some. I know we, ha we don't have here in our area right now, curves like we used to have but they used to let people come in and bring like business cards and catalogs and leave them there because it's related to the, what they're working on is trying to help people to eat healthier so you might ask about that um, i is for i need help so you ask for what you need and j is just be nice people um, help people reach things on the top shelf at the grocery store pay for the coffee order behind you give the clerk a, a business card to be able to share. So just those are kinds of things you can do. Just, you know, being friendly, being nice, having a smile on your face is really good. I'm um, doing a kids in the kitchen show. Great thing with that Toy Story 4 stuff. Um, of course, you can do a kitchen show for a church kitchen. And churches sometimes have really cruddy things in their kitchen to be able to serve with and things to cook on. And, you know, it's the reject stuff out of everybody's kitchen. So you can say, why don't we get some really neat things in your church kitchen and let them do that. So that's a really good way to get a really great um, fundraiser, but not really a fundraiser. It's actually a real regular cooking show, but it's helping out somebody else the same. L, when you're standing in line, talk to the people while you wait. So strike up a conversation. Hey, I see you got crescent rolls. Are you gonna make a taco ring out of that? <laughs> Um, when you go to the library, I love this idea. Put a business card in books to leave as a bookmark, and then maybe you'll get a customer out of that. You can go around and plant business cards all the way through the library. How about that, too? That'd be really neat, especially go to the bestseller section so that you'll be able to get some of those. And maybe cookbooks, that would be a good place, too. That's where the hungry people shop, you know, get, get books. They're going to go get cookbooks, and that would be a good place. Logo wear, be sure you are always got your Pampered Chef logo wear on magazines you can look in magazines for leads in there so if, especially if it's a local kind of magazine or newspaper or something like that you may find where somebody uh, just won a cooking contest and that's a great person you can just reach out and say hey congratulations i saw you won the uh, pillsbury bake-off and really excited for you um wanted to send you a, a congratulations here's a season's best recipe book and i'd love to help you if you need to get some great kitchen tools in your kitchen um, so people that are looking for a particular recipe, you can send them one because we have that um, every Wednesday here in Arkansas in our main newspaper. We have um, the cooking section, the food section, and there's a section of people looking for recipes for things and people will respond back through the editor um, and you can either do that or, you know, if you can figure out who they are and where they are, you might be able to send it to them yourself. Um, in the mall, you can always compliment sales clerks that did really good customer service and see if they might want to sign up on your team or, uh, you know, you might get some business that way as well. So always have your logo wear, carry around your shopping bag. And actually, if you carry around a Pampered Chef bag, people come up and say, where's the Pampered Chef store? And you'll be like, right here, here I am. And so, you know, instead of having, a, you know, that's a, a really good way to be able to do that. For um, messages, be sure that when you're on your phone that you have a message that says that you're with Pampered Chef. So when somebody calls your phone, they're going to know that. So it's advertising and write your phone bill off for business. Yay. You can get a Pampered Chef name tag like from the PC Gear store and wear it everywhere. And people will be like, oh, you're with Pampered Chef. So that's a really good way to advertise your business. You can host your own open house in your neighborhood. 
and you can be able to network with other businesses. So um, be able to, to do things. And I heard just the other day, actually, I think when some of us were talking, um, the director group, we were talking about somebody, y'all help me here, who has people in their house. Nicole, you know this story, right? Somebody from like another business to come in and she does a cooking demo and has that person there and she shows that person how to cook on video and that person gets to talk about their business. So it actually helps to get business for both people at the same time and helps to network so that their friends are going to be watching them and might get you some new customers. So I think that's a really smart idea. Um, newspapers, look at your birth announcements. Those people need somebody to help them get some meals ready in a hurry. Um, weddings and engagements, those are great for wedding registries and for wedding showers. Um, the community calendar might tell you what kind of uh, groups are going to be having meetings and need somebody to speak, or they might be talking about some kind of a, a vendor event that they're going to have or something like that where you can be able to communicate with them. And you'll see information about maybe a new business and so you can congratulate them and take in some, some brownies and say, hey, you know, I'm your Pampered Chef representative in this area and just wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. So you can do that. Oh, for out and about, wear your PC gear, use your tote. Already talked about that. Go to the park, set up a little table with some products on it while the kids are playing. Good way to be able to interact. Post office, people there usually, uh, you'll see other people in line who are self-employed and maybe selling, mailing their dot-com items. I'll see people go in there that has, they have a huge stack of things that are in padded envelopes and stuff like that, or people that have a different direct sales um, logo thing on, and you can be able to network with those people in the post office. Pregnant people, gosh, they're always a potential recruit because they might want to be able to stay home with their kids instead of going back to work or say, you know, gosh, looks like, uh, you know, you're going to be needing a freezing meal workshop. <laughs> so you can tell them about that as well. Q is for quick questions. You can say, hey, have you ever heard of Pampered Chef? Are you familiar with it? You can ask people, you know, hey, uh, you know, what, what kind of work do you do? And they'll say, and they say, they'll ask you what kind of work you do. Oh, I'm with Pampered Chef. Are you familiar with that? So you can ask people a quick question and be able to get a conversation started. R is for real estate agents. So they're going to know who's moving in and moving out. They might want to buy gifts for new um, home buyers that uh, they have a contract with. Um, recycle your leftover catalogs. Don't throw them away. Always leave them someplace instead of throwing them out. Ask people for referrals. Restaurants, you can always take business cards and leave those with your server along with your tip. Um, sometimes restaurants will have like a business card bowl that they draw out and give somebody something. So you might be able to get some business even that way because sometimes they'll stick them on a bulletin board after they're through. Retirement homes. A lot of times people in retirement homes, you think, oh, they're not going to buy anything. They love for you to come in and do a demo because the ones that are really alert and active and everything like to watch that. So you want to make sure you make something that is not high in sugar because you might have diabetic people, not high in salt because you've got cardiac patients probably there, but make something that's kind of healthy that they can be able to taste when you get finished. And you probably will get some orders from the people that work there because nurses and other healthcare people love our stuff. And often you will find that people will want to buy things for their adult children and grandchildren, particularly in the fall as it gets closer to Christmas. For rewards and recognition, you can offer an extra special for shows that are close to home. Think of how much gas you save if you're doing a show on your street versus doing one an hour or two away like Nicole and I do. And so, you know, gosh, I love having shows that are in my same city. It's really fun. S for schools. So you can do fundraisers, you can sell to teachers, you can leave catalogs in the, the break room. And during the summer, of course, teachers are really good customers for us during the summer when they're not at school all the time. Sports teams, we talked about fundraisers already. Telephone book. Who's even got a telephone book anymore? I usually give mine to my mother-in-law. But, you know, there is always a spot if you want to do some cold calling. I hate getting those. Personally, people don't answer the phone, but it is one of the other options that you might find, and especially the yellow page businesses. Telemarketers, do you ever listen to them? I usually hang up on them myself, but this suggests that we listen to them and then offer them our business opportunity because they're not making much money doing what they're doing, and they get hung up on all the time. And Our business is much more fun. So you could actually be very nice to them and then just say, hey, you know, you seem like a really nice person, and gosh, wouldn't you like to do something a little more fun than what you're doing? <laughs> So we could do that. Um, thank you notes. So you could send a thank you note for excellent customer service. Hey, I'd love to have you on my team. U is for universities. Students always need more money and a flexible schedule. So they might be interested in selling with us. And people on, in dorm rooms need our products, don't they? 
D is for vendors. Who do you write checks to? Who do you do business with? So if you are doing business with the dry cleaners and you say, okay, so I've gotten what I need from you. Do you need anything from me? And they may laugh and say, yes, I sell Pampered Chef. I'd love to share my catalog with you today. And let me know if there's anything that you need. Um, here's my information. I'll follow up with you when I come in to pick up my sweater next week. So you can be able to do that. W is for walk around. You can walk around and um, interact with people, neighbors and in neighborhoods and, and apartment places and things like that. Go to the pool, be in areas where you are seeing lots of people because you're going to have contacts that you would never have. X is for expect greatness because it will come to you. So we're going to expect greatness. And why are you afraid to talk to people? So we want to make sure that we're not afraid to talk to people, that we just jump in and we do it. And Z, zebras have stripes so they can blend in. Don't be a zebra. You want to make something to stand you up from the crowd. One of my very favorite speakers we had at conference one year was the lemonade lady. And the lemonade lady did outlandish, crazy things that people would just laugh at. But it was like she got a lot of attention. She would say, use like a small serving, uh, the small scoop as your keychain and say, oh, well, where are my keys? I never can find them. Oh, here they are. And pull that out. And people were like, oh, that's really awesome. And so, you know, she would be able to talk about her products. Oh, by the way, I sell Pampered Chef. She would put her change in the flour sugar shaker and put it in that. And so you can do things like that where you have a product in your purse in your bag that you pull out and people can be able to see. So it makes you stand out and it makes you different and unique. So always go for not being the zebra, be somebody that people will notice and think is really super fun. So ready, set, go. Let's work on continuing to earn Disney. So what questions send the keys to the mix and chop and then you can sit there and show that when you're out. There, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> and then if anybody comes up and decides to pick on you, you've got a mix and chop in your hand. There you go. Well, actually, I have a couple of customers that use the um, uh, um, meat tenderizer when they're walking. They carry two of them. What does this say? Document recovery, not open, like to view. No. Okay, I save one and I'm good to go. Okay, so we are back to here. Oh, we got more people now. Yay! Molly, Janelle, and Michelle. Hey, Michelle. I don't see your face. Hi. You on the phone? Yeah, I'm here. I just. Um... I'm out in the garage with the boys, so I figured I'd just go with no video. Oh, cool. That's good. Well, so did y'all get any ideas that were fresh and new today? Anybody? What's one of your favorite ones? I liked the networking and going live with somebody else that's in sales at your house yeah. or, wherever, or wherever to show off, to teach them to do something, but then to, you know, connect with their crew. Yeah. I think that's really unique. I like it too. So I'm really excited about that. I got to finish de in my house so I can get somebody in here and not be embarrassed to do video, but I'm going to get on that. So anyway, um, okay. So welcome to those of you guys that came on board while I was talking. And um, our last section that we are going to do um, is we're having tips from top recruiters. And we have some top recruiters on here. Yay. And so we're just going to give some really quick pithy great tips for um, being a, a good recruiter. And Molly, why don't you go first, if you don't mind? Okay. Um, so tips on recruiting. <laughs> I have to laugh because I've never really thought I'm that great of a recruiter. I'm going to try to go outside. Okay. I hope I don't get eaten alive by bugs because my kids are loud. They're not even like mosquitoes. They're like gnats and they're horrible. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, and you're freezing up now. You're frozen. Mm -hmm. You're still frozen. Honest, but in my can, can you guys hear me okay? Uh, yes, we can now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I really just try to listen like if I'm at a cooking party, I just listen. I listen to conversations. I listen to, um, you know, is it someone that is talking about a job that they hate? Like I had a host last week and she hates her job with a passion. But she loves Pampered Chef and her husband loves Pampered Chef. And I'm like, why don't you just give this a shot? So it's, I kind of do better when I'm in person like that. And it's something that I've kind of picked up on. And then I can kind of just slip it right in. <laughs> um, Good. Is how, like, I haven't quite figured out the recruiting from virtual parties yet. 
Um, I'm in awe of people that do amazing with that. So I, I would love to figure that aspect out. But I think really, um, you know, most of my recruiting is in person at parties, you know, even kind of out and about when I meet people, you know, I go to the parks a lot and I just start talking to people and it always comes back around to Pampered Chef somehow because it'll get to the point where they ask me what I do. And so I'll tell them and then, oh, I love Pampered Chef. And then that just kind of starts that. And um, so, yeah, I think really just listening. Oh, the other um, thing that I do is, you know, as you do virtual parties, you become friends with a, quite a few people with your host and, um, you know, guests that I really enjoyed or I thought were funny or whatever. Um, and you just start watching their post. So like I had this girl that I've been friends with for probably five years and I finally asked her to host a party and she hosted last December, January. I don't, I think January. And she's just super cute and her posts are f funny. Like they're very engaging posts no matter what she's posting about. And so she was so excited about our pampered chef party. And I had never really asked her about the business. And then she was going to submit her order. And she had made this super cute post about Girl Scout cookies. And I said, Raquel, have you ever thought about selling pampered chef? I go, you're just so intriguing. And you're so engaging with all your posts on social media. And you absolutely love pampered chef. And she's like, no, I really hadn't thought about it. And the next morning we chatted for 30 minutes and she signed. That's awesome. So it's just plant the seed, man. Just so. planting the seed and just watching. And and like I have a girl that's gonna join tonight and she's been talking about Pampered Chef for a year. And her husband hasn't been wanting her to join. And I saw her at a cooking party on Saturday and she's like, I'm still thinking about this, Molly, but I can't go behind his back and do it. I'm like, I would. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, no. You gotta keep your marriage, but I'm like, does she even realize like what this could do for you? And I said, what if you just went to him and said, you know what, honey, this is really something I would like to try. And if it stresses me out, I'll be done with it. But I really, I really just want to do it. And she got back to me today and she said, oh my gosh, these bugs. And she said, he, he finally said, okay, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's there you go. Right there. <laughs> that's so, good. Yeah, that's kind of how I go about doing it. It's just really relationships and watching and listening and um i don't know people that i think would be fun to work with good good that's excellent so. very good Kara, you want to go next okay um i think only i can add to that that i can think of is just to put that out there i mean mention it to everybody Share your excitement and how much you're enjoying what you're doing versus, you know, waiting for the right moment or when you really need someone and just, you know, share it all the time. I hesitated. Actually, when I first signed up, I told Michael that I was not recruiting and I was not going to meetings. <laughs> Look where I am now. So <laughs> um, you just have to start talking about it and the benefits are too incredible to not share. Um, but when you hear people talking about you know, what are they doing? What is you know, things they're having struggles with? And if it's something that fits into pampered stuff that can fix that or help that, you know, it's, it's almost wrong of us not to say something. Absolutely. You start getting into that mindset that you're there to help people. It, it's not even that you have to do the work. You just give them the opportunity, get them started. And then it's up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, then it, I think it, 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 it comes around because my, um, the last couple of recruits that I've just recently had are people who either don't like their job or want to add a little extra towards retirement or you know, there's multiple reasons, but it was just, and they saw, especially with this virtual, how easy it is to do um, and that it works. And I think that's part of it too. Like with the one with what Molly was saying with her, this guy's, this lady's husband, and once he starts seeing the money and seeing that it works, it usually flips a lot of them too. Um, yeah. I've even gone so far as having a husband and wife team come sit down together to ask questions about the business so that he can see the money side of it. Cause most guys, that's what they're concerned with. Is this actually going to do something or is this going to cost me money? Mm -hmm. um, like when I got a job at Bath and Body Works, my husband like, this is going to cost me money, isn't it? Because you know, you have to spend your paycheck buying everything there. <laughs> In this respect, you're not, you're earning it and getting, you know, so yeah, just talk to everybody, keep the word out there. 
Um, and if you don't talk to anybody, you can't be upset with anybody but yourself as to why you're not growing. Yeah. And yep. that's something that I had to get out, especially for quiet people. You have to get out there outside of that comfort zone. Yep, absolutely. Nicole, you want to go to? Yeah, I guess I'm just going to add on to theirs, kind of the same thing. Um, you know, I would say probably 99% of my signups are for my show. Um, I mean, I do have every now and then somebody sign up online. Um, but majority of them do come from shows. And just like Kara said, if you're not giving the information at shows, most people are not going to come out and just say, oh, I want to sign up to sell Pan for Chef. Am I correct? Uh -huh. And I think a lot of times if you don't, then they're going to think, oh, she's afraid that, you know, they're afraid that they'll take business from you. Yeah. You know? Yes. And so, you know, they think that, oh, I don't want to compete with her because I'm in the same area. You know, we don't have territories. It's not like that. Yeah. Um, and I think too, and I've, and, and I say this because I've had several people tell me this, um, is they're like, oh my God, you know, when you have a consultant that's been in business for 16 years versus a brand new person, obviously their show's different you know, all that. And I think people are, I, I want to say intimidated by that because they think how in the world am I supposed to learn all this? Yeah. Um, or supposed to know all this. And I think one of the, um, one of the best things that I always tell people is, you know, this is your business. You cannot be Nicole Harris or you can't be April or you can't be Kara. You can't be that person. We're here to help you do that. But I think so many people go away with, oh, God, I can't do what she does. So that they're scared to death from the beginning. So um, I'll give you an example. I actually had a show Friday night, um, and it was actually a very good show. I walked away with six bookings. No recruit leads that night, but I got a text the next morning that literally said, I had so much fun at your show last night. You made everything look fun and easy. I would love to join your team. It's awesome. But, okay. you know, the other thing, too, when you have six people that book a party, First thing, especially if I've driven an hour or two to get to that person's house to do it, first thing I'm going to do is ask that host and say, six of your friends want to do parties. Are you sure you don't want to give this a try? Oh, yeah. And I've done, mm -hmm. and I've, and, and I'll be there with you on April because I've done that several times when I've got um, my shows up in Roanoke. Like I, the, the show that I had back in January and I got seven bookings from it. Like I all, but about like, you sure you don't, <laughs> like I asked her several times. She's like, nope, you'll be coming back seven more times. <laughs> but I will say out of those times that I did come back, I did just sign that new recruit page who's already qualified in two shows and she just shared the business with somebody already. So it, it obviously has worked out in, in kind of the same way as far as, you know, if I do have shows up there and I do give my host when it comes to that option, because there are people who book for you, if that makes sense, you yeah. know, they book for you. So I, you know, I always say, look, you know, they're new. If you want to give them a try, that kind of thing. But back to, what Molly said and back to, you know, Kara, you know, you really have to give the information because, you know, if you don't, somebody else is, I mean, somebody else is going to offer that opportunity to them. And then you can't be mad at yourself when you didn't offer it. So always make sure it is part of your show, no matter what you have to cut out. Yeah. <coughs> Janelle, you're up. All right. So I think you guys all said really good things, but one thing that really stands out that we have to try to remember is that this is a really easy business to stay home, you know, on your off time and where you go out and where your social functions are. Who is your circle? Go find new people, go find new resources. Go to, I joined yoga to get a, I hate yoga. I joined to get a consultant and now I like it. <laughs> And I've met several other people and I got in parties, but I, I have seriously, I joined yoga in January. I never wanted to, I don't like to exercise and that, um, so, but the best thing that came out of it is I met a bunch of new circle of people so that, um, what do you do socially? Do you do something in your church? Do you do something in your community? I joined junior league of Billings which is a woman's organizational group that helps with um, abuse and um, women's shelters. And we just do a ton of things in Billings. Uh, it's a great resource of professional women that are out there. And I've done a lot of parties. I call it, I call it the junior league of booking when I go to a meeting because I usually pick up two or three parties and, you know, so our inner circle, um, one thing, April said was, you know, go walk around. When I first started Pampered Chef, I had just, well, I had lived here about three years and I had lived up in the country for 
22 years before that. So literally brought the electricity and the water into the place and then the neighbors came in and then we left. But we moved to this small <laughs> community here and in three years I knew only the neighbors behind me. So when I became a pampered chef person, I went and I walked my neighborhood all the time. They know me as the pampered chef girl. Oh, I, my can opener broke. Do you have a can opener? Yeah, come on down. I have a can opener for you. I mean, then their friends refer. Referrals is what you're after. If they don't want to host a party for you, if they don't want to sign up as a consultant with you, ask them for a referral. You know, don't give them the out though. Don't say, well, if you're, if you don't want to do it, do you know anyone that does? Just say, if you ever hear of anyone looking for a good part-time income and you never know where that referral comes from. Mm -hmm. So last month I had a lot of leads and I myself personally did not get any recruits and I had uh, three or four of them that were really close to signing mm -hmm. last month and I was um, working them but with each and every single one of them they just weren't ready. They, yeah, but you keep them on the list, right? Keep them on the list. Keep one woman, her husband is sick. Um, another girl, um, three of them want to do it. They didn't want to do it part time. They wanted to get in there and just hit it hard. So they felt like the summer they couldn't do it, but they're, none of them were no's. So they, they're still on my list until I get that. No, I never want to do it. Well, you that's know, I think that that's a misconception that people have <laughs> that there's a perfect time to do it. Now timing we right. know is important. But right. there's never going to be a perfect time. And I've got one girl I've been working with for, I promise, 10 years. And it's like, not quite. I'm not quite ready. I've got to have this. And now I've got to move in my new house. And now I've got to get this health problem taken care of. And it's constantly something that she thinks has to be perfect. And she could have already been making a lot of money if she had gone ahead and start, signed up. Can I, right. can I make a comment on that, y'all? Absolutely. Please do. Um, so the three people that just signed up with me, one was the end of April and then two in May are all people that I have been working on for years. Right. And it just, it wasn't so much that the timing was right, but it just, because I was consistently reminding them of the option or the opportunity it, when they felt it was right, whether that's, you know, I mean, like you said, they could have made a whole bunch of money and, you know, gotten out of their other job by now, but you know, without being pushy, without just reminding them and gently reminding them and one of them. When she did her first book party with me, her husband said, you should sell this again. You love it. Do you love doing it so much? That was years ago. And I'm like, if you've got his permission, girl, we're signing you up right now. And she's like, no, I'm going to wait. But it just, you know, it just kept coming around and coming around and it finally did. So, yeah. you know, be patient with those ones. I agree. There's no perfect time, but in their head, if it's perfect for them, mm -hmm. well, come on. So, but you know, once you actually turn the switch and start doing it and offering it it's like it gets real easy so pam don't be scared about doing it it's it's really you know once you've done got the first couple and you're like oh well that wasn't hard and then you'll do more you know and one of the things that i try to always do is at each of my parties then you know if i try to do it before the party too but if for sure at the party then i'm going to say part of my job you know one of the things i always do with all of my hosts is to say hey uh, you know, Pam, I think you'd be a great consultant. And do, have you ever thought about doing this? Do you have any interest at all? Because if you do, if we had announced it to your friends tonight, then they're going to be likely to be ready to do parties for you. And it would be really great for us to get you started off in that way. What do you think about doing that? You know, if you've already kind of planted that seed, they're going to be more likely to say, yeah, I've thought about it. And yeah, I want to do it. You know, but I've had people that, you know, I didn't talk to beforehand until I got to their party and then they'd say, well, yeah, I think I might want to do it, you know, and then I'll say, you know, so-and-so's thinking about doing it. And if she does, I want you to mark your slip, her name right there where it says, I want to do a party. And so if she signs up that you'll do one for her, um, then that's going to help her get up to a really good start. So, and then when everybody does, then she says, oh, well, gosh, I guess I better do it. They all said they want to do a party for me. <laughs> So it's pretty easy. And actually, I tell you, the people who are the most successful at recruiting right now are those virtual people because it's not hard to get people to sign up for virtual parties. If you just ask, lots of people think of lay in bed. I mean, how many of y'all lay in bed thinking, if I just had some more money, I'd buy another piece of farmhouse furniture, right, Nicole? <laughs> crack me up but you know it's like I, I lay in bed thinking about okay what if you know now I gotta 
you know, this to pay for and how am I going to do that? And most of us do that. You know, we got stuff running around our head of, you know, if I just had another $200, if I just had another $500 or what if, you know, and it's like so many people are that way. Women are worriers. And, you know, if they could have a not hard way to be able to make that extra money, a lot of people are going to say yes. You just got to put it out there. And, you, you know, it could just be something that makes a difference for those people enough that, I mean, because most people that fall bankruptcy, if they had an extra four or $500 a month, they wouldn't have to do that. And so you could be saving somebody from financial disaster. Can I, about, can I speak about bankruptcy? Please so do. one of my consultants, I didn't know this at the time. Um, I made them sign up, like literally took their debit card or credit. I don't know. I think it was their debit card. We're friends. So of course I, like took it like all I heard was I'll do it on payday I'll do it on payday and we were at work one day and I literally took their debit card I don't know what bill didn't get paid didn't matter to me um but I will tell you that I saved them from filing bankruptcy and all that they needed every month was 225 dollars mm -hmm. but they were going to have to file bankruptcy because they couldn't afford it yeah so that's a sad thing I think a lot of people think that when it comes to bankruptcy because I think there's some kind of thing out there that I read maybe in some kind of money business magazine or something um, that three, I think the last time I looked $325 a month was the average of people having to file bankruptcy. It's a small amount. If you, I mean, $300, $300, but you think people filing bankruptcy, you would think thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. But really, really awesome. Well, I hope there've been some suggestions that have helped y'all. Michelle, you got any questions or anything since you're on mute down there? No, I'll probably just rewatch the beginning part. I, I think I chimed in on letter D, so I missed quite a bit. So I'll oh, go back and watch. Yeah, the you didn't miss a whole lot. We went through. We were moving kind of fast, so you didn't miss a whole lot. Just a few minutes. So anyway, but hope you hopefully you'll find some good ideas that you hadn't thought of before. Pam, you got any questions or any comments or anything you want to talk about? April, we need to talk. We need about uh, next plan. Yeah, yeah, as soon as we get through talking to Pam, we will. Pam, you got anything you want to add or ask? No, I'm good right now. I did look, though, I am I have over 4,000 points for the Disney trip right now. So Good, good. And so let's add a couple of recruits on there, and you'll be just getting right on up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll help yeah. you. You know, yeah. don't be scared, because, I mean, if somebody says they're interested and they need to get together in person or do a three-way call, I'll do it. You know, I'll do it with you. And we can do, we haven't done a um, virtual thing in a while. So, who left? Who left? We had somebody else. It was in a different distribution. Can't remember. Michelle. Nope, there's Michelle. Oh, that's it. Pam, Pam fell off. I think off. you said Pam left, yeah. yeah. She fell off somehow. Probably by accident. So, anyway, well, uh, so, Kara, tell what is coming up next. All right, so we have decided um, to switch back to Sundays because Wednesday ended up not working out as well as we thought. We're starting June 9th, we're going back to Sundays and we're going to do what we're calling Superstar Sunday Summer Shorts, which is going to be a short 20 minute talk from a superstar in the company and then time for question and answers and that's it. So we're not saying a half hour, we're going to give it an hour time block, but we're going to push to have it be about half an hour give or take a few minutes, depending on the questions and the answers and stuff. So starting this Sunday, it's going to be Michael Reeves, and he's going to be talking about picking up after hitting bottom in your business or in life or however he decides to represent that and getting back up into an active, thriving business. After that, we're going to have, um, you want to go through all of them or do we just give you subjects? Yeah, go ahead. On the 16th, we're going to have Shaprice Pennington. She is a director up in the New Hampshire area. She is going to talk about going live. She has an amazing bubbly personality. She goes live all the time and everybody responds and she's got a good following that way. So I know that's daunting for a lot of people. So I figured we'd watch her and let her talk about that. On the 23rd, it's gonna be Brian Parker and he's gonna focus on selling, but a slightly different aspect of that. He's gonna talk about the recipes and how you can really work with your recipes to help show off the cookware and the tools that you need. Um, so it's kind of selling, but it's kind of a different perspective. 
Um, even though a lot of us are doing virtual, we still have to know how to cook. We still need to have to know how to use our products and talk to it and talk about it. So that's kind of what he's going to do with that. And then on the 30th, we're going to have Laura Polito. She's the director in the New York area. She is a hoot and she is amazing at out and about contacts to the point where it's actually considered a hashtag pulling a Polito. So when you're out and you meet somebody and you connect with them and you get a booking or a contact or a lead and you actually um, you go through with that, people are contacting her and saying, hey, I did it. I just stepped out of my comfort zone and I pulled a Polito today. So we're going to have her on here. And like I said, she's amazing with that. She's real big on in, coffee talk. So, pardon me? She's real big on coffee talk. She is. On coffee talk, so that's and then that's in July, we've got a couple of ones that are in the works. Um, we've got Sharon Zellen, who's going to help us with one. I'm not sure exactly when on that one yet. And then a couple of other people we're still waiting to hear back from. So um, so that's that's June, and we've got that nailed down, and then we'll keep working on that from there. If you have any topics you guys really want to hear something about, um, April is asking that we make a comment on the Digging Deeper to Disney. Comment on that. I would really like more information about such and such, because we can't read your minds. And we want to be able to find somebody who fits that category best and, and go search through our amazing organization of superstars. And that way you hear it from other people other than just us as well. Because sometimes you can hear the exact same thing said in a slightly different way by somebody else and it clicks. You know, yeah. so it, that's why we want to try to get different people to bring in these perspectives and share this. So there you go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm really excited about that. We're going to have some really good stuff, so y'all be sure and make time to be able to get on those. And, you know, it's kind of embarrassing for us when we have somebody big in the company and we got three people on here. So if y'all can try to get more people on, would be really awesome so that we can have a good group of people for these. And, and the first one we're having, Michael Reeves, he is hysterical. He's from North Carolina, super country. He'll say things like, well, shut the barn door and paint it red or something like that. You know, so he's got lots of Michael, Michael Reeves isms that he uses and you will love him. He, he creates his own new recipes. He makes, you know, meat and potatoes kind of things. He just makes different stuff. He doesn't do a lot of our regular recipes. And so, you know, he just, he's, he's very unique and uh, has a huge following and a great business. So I'm really excited about having him on here. What time is that again? It'll eight. be eight o'clock central, so nine o'clock eastern. And cool, adjust, thank you. Adjust it accordingly wherever you happen yes. to be. And we will record all those, but that's going to go all summer. We're not stopping for anything, even conference week. So we'll have something going on every time. So we will, uh, and actually, we were uh, Kara and I were talking about at conference for those of us uh, director folks that are at conference and even non-director people, Pam, you can do it too. We're going to um, actually, when we meet people that are cool, we'll go live on our page and interview people and just get them to get, share a tip, you know, so that you can just say, hey, I've seen your name before, share a tip with our team, you know, and so that way we can, can have some neat stuff that goes on through conference week. Oh, we all know cool. that we're going to come home Sunday and just kind of implode. So we'll just do it up yeah. until that time and come home Sunday and let it go. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be awesome. Well, y'all have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Pam and Michelle, for being on with us. We appreciate y'all being steady eddies. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing y'all on Sunday. Okay? Thanks, guys. Thank so much. Thank you. And thanks for recording. Okay? Thank you. Of course.